so welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all things kale, what type I grow, how I grow it, how I protect it from things, um, what I do with it most importantly because it's an incredibly nutritious thing to have and it's really delicious and if you do it in the right way um, it's a complete game changer. So if you've not already subscribed to my channel if you could please do so because you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my home garden, my allotment and also my home kitchen. Now there are various different types of kale and I have grown all different types and I love them all but I like growing the, the dwarf kale only because it's much easier to look after and keep covered because the other types of kale get really 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 tall and that's where you have problems if you can't cover it and protect it from various different bugs so as you can see my kale's here so like i said i use a dwarf kale which is absolutely fantastic um i um, protect it by using canes and I've used all different things it's a really really easy way of creating a cane so just normal long bamboo canes I think these are eight feet long and I think those are three foot long um, and then you get these little connectors and you just push it together so it's really easy to move it around every single year and to get in and out of it so the other thing I do to protect it is I use EnviroMesh now it might be expensive but again it's a real game changer because it stops the white fly um, going on your um, kale. It doesn't completely stop it from happening, but it significantly reduces it to the point that it makes it much easier um, to, to, to want to eat. When it's covered in loads of white fly, it's not appealing to anybody, even yourself, when you've grown it. The other thing I do is I do often double net. At the beginning of the season, I just put the Enviro mesh over, but as it grows up and my Enviro mesh won't quite go, you know, it starts to lift up um, and doesn't quite touch the ground as far down as I would like it to. I pop a little bit of this green netting over the top of it just as an extra layer because it, it goes right over the sides. And obviously, I weight down all around the sides because what you're trying to do is you're stopping trying to stop any from getting in, you're trying to stop the butterflies from getting in so you don't get caterpillars um, eating them, and you're trying to stop the, um, the white fly as well. And that, those are, I find, the biggest predators. And as you can see with the canes as well, I've also put some big heavy string, kind of like zigzagged it through to hold the netting up because sometimes it, you find that it flops down. So, so that's a top tip on covering. I will put some links in the description for some of these items that I use because um, it's really handy to get those if you can. The other thing is to, to pick it regularly. Um, that's another thing to kind of reduce the white fly. Um, from underneath the leaves um, if you don't pick it regularly enough I mean you get loads and loads of it so you can easily share it with friends and family so to pick it more regularly so the white fly can't take hold and to check underneath the leaves regularly if you're getting any of the little yellow eggs which could sig signify that white cabbage butterfly have got in and then you'll obviously get caterpillars now we um, you cook this in various various dishes absolutely delightful but something that was a complete game changer to us was when we made crispy cow and if you can hang on to the end I will do a quick demonstration on how you make crispy cow. It's ridiculously easy um, and incredibly yummy and basically everyone in our house likes it, even those that, that don't normally like cow, which is fantastic. Even the boy child likes it. So what I do when I harvest mine, because I've got quite a lot, if I didn't have so many, I would take a few off each plant, but because I've got several, I think I've got about 10 or 12, I'll basically harvest virtually a whole plant, but just leaving a few of the top leaves. You never take the top ones out because that's where the, um, the cow actually sprouts out of. So you should never pick a plant bare, but I will remove virtually all the leaves below because I know more will come out of the top. Like so. There we go. So we will head over to my kitchen and I will give you a quick demo on how to make the most delicious crispy kale. So we're back in my home kitchen and now I'm going to quickly run through how you make crispy cow. It's incredibly easy. So all you need is a baking sheet and some oil. I use a good quality English rapeseed oil that I decant into a sprayer. If you've not got a sprayer, it's incredibly useful because you can't really drizzle it on because it would be too much. So we'll put a link in the description if you've not got one and some sea salt. So all you do is you pull the kale off of the stems like so, incredibly, incredibly easy. Um, set your oven to gas mark six or fan assisted electric 200 or if not assisted then 220. So incredibly easy, just break it up into pieces like this. 
not an exact thing, you know, really, really quite randomly. Sometimes I really quite pile it up. Um, so it all depends how many you're cooking for. So a little bit more, I think. So like I said, this is incredibly lovely and incredibly easy. You don't even need a knife or anything at all. So it's really, really good. And really pat, pile it on because it will really shrivel up. So remember that. You don't want to put it on too thinly because by the time it's cooked, you won't have anything left. It's a bit like when you cook cow normally and spinach. It really does shrink down quite a bit. So spread it out as evenly as you can. And then just with the leaves, a bit of a spray with the oil. It's worth doing the oil because without the oil it really isn't quite as nice so I do um, recommend to put a little bit of the oil on and obviously some lovely sea salt. If you wanted to, you could put say some sesame seeds on there or poppy seeds to give it a little bit more flavour. But for this one we're just going to do plain rapeseed oil and sea salt and we're just going to pop it in the oven. It can go from not cooked to overdone quite quickly so I normally set it for five minutes and then I take a look to see if it's ready. So it's had just over five minutes and I turned it halfway through. It can catch really really quickly so do keep an eye on it but as you can hear we've got a lovely lovely crispy cow so if you've not tried it before it's definitely worth a go. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and please do put some comments or questions if you have any.